On our way to South Park, Colorado, we stumbled upon the strangest ghost town with this almost Mad Max looking barn outside of it. It's actually a truly forgotten ghost town. If you blink, you'll miss it. Most of it has been ravaged by fire or collapse over the years. Most of what remains is a ranch and the general store you'll see here. Originally named after its settler, Aldolf Giru, the town of Giru was little more than a collection of ranches and a general store. Later, through Americanization and pronunciation difficulties, the town was respelled and renamed Garo. However, the area was settled by the Giru family, led by Aldolf and Mary. Between them, they had 10 children with varying levels of survival and success that would take far too long to get into in this video. Aldolf was most known as being the owner and proprietor of the original Giru General Store. However, Aldolf and Mary were originally French immigrants who settled for a time in Cincinnati, Ohio, spent a brief period in Lexingworth, Kansas, before settling here in Giru, Colorado in 1862 on a 640-acre ranch. What many people don't realize is Aldolf's ties to the American Confederacy, but we'll get into that more in a moment. First, let's take a look around. That looks like somebody still gets the mail here. Doesn't it? See, what we're looking at here represents the last of the Giru family wealth. Here's a piece to an old typewriter here I'm looking at. The interesting part is this at one point was the largest ranch in South Park and Park County. However, in 1864, Adolf decided to play a role in the Confederate Army's incursion into the Union's territories, more specifically into the Colorado Territory. You see, Aldolf allowed the 3rd Texas Cavalry of the Confederate Army to stay at his ranch in July of 1864. These men were ordered by Confederate generals to disrupt the Union's supply trains, which at the time crossed right through the Colorado Territory. Their second order was to raise a Confederate army from the mining camps that surrounded Park County. Their ultimate goal was to rise and have a march on Denver City now known as Denver. Fortunately, none of those orders were successfully carried out. Out of the 50 men who set out on this mission, only nine survived by the time they made it to Giru. Lack of experience in the mountains, as well as lack of preparation, and starvation is credited for most of the loss. However, this did not deter the remaining nine men as they gathered their strength on the Giru family farm and ate from the general store we saw earlier. They then proceeded to carry out the longest and most brutal string of stagecoach robberies Colorado has ever seen. They primarily robbed through the South Park region. They had long since disavowed their allegiance to the Confederacy, now donning a new name, the Reynolds Gang. They were one by one killed and about five of the bandits were eventually caught and tried convicted of not only treason for their behavior within the Confederacy, but also for the robberies and rapes committed during the stagecoach invasions. 
Aldolf died in 1875 at the age of 53. He was never tried nor convicted for aiding and abetting the Confederacy. Marie Giru had no choice but to move on, and that she did. In her 34-year widowship, she grew the ranch from 640 acres to over 5,000 acres. Each year, she produced between 1,500 and 1,800 pounds of beef, which in today's value is approximately a million dollars. By the time Marie was through, she had produced the largest ranch ever seen in South Park, Colorado. This was no easy feat for anyone, but particularly for a woman in the 1870s. Three years after her death, in 1913, Marie was recognized by the U.S. Department of Agriculture in a piece they called The Importance of Women on Ranches and Homesteads. You can read this piece in the link below. Thanks for spending some time today with us in Giru, Colorado. <laughs>